Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Top. Hey. How are you? I'm good. You feeling good? I'm feeling great. Great. Nice. Excellent. I'm feeling awesome. Nice. Interesting. I was thinking about um, relationships and marriage, mostly because, you know, we have a lot of friends we've been talking about. We were just, people always ask us, how do we get along so well? Because we're together all the time. We yes, work together all the time. And then they start talking about their marriage. And then we just sort of start talking about relationships and marriage. Yes. And um, one of the things that's really interesting to me is this idea of, um, obviously, communication is important. But also equally important is trying to not be in a... Uh, a blame-based space, a space yeah. where we're always one person's at fault or one the other. And then you were talking about, what did you call it? It reminded me of Sesame Street. You called it something. Uh, oh, relationships brought to you by... The number three. The number three. Yeah, yeah. I think we should share that with the world. Yeah, so, well, so there's a couple that, I mean, you hit on a bunch of things. So I, I mean, always the do. <laughs> <laughs> The first thing is, I think a lot of times people think about communication as being talking. Right. Right? Like, I, you, we communicate, we're talking, we're listen, we're, and we think of listening as, like, hearing things, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we have to think totally differently about that. We have to think about communication as communication, right? Like, we're, the purpose, the goal is to commune. Mm -hmm. And what are we communing around? Well, we're communing around a shared understanding of things, right? right. So we're communing around a shared mental model, right? right? right. And, and that's really the goal of communication. It's not I talk and you listen and you talk and I listen and then we're done. Right. The goal is to actually come to some shared understanding of, right. of something. So the co part is the most important piece. Yeah, the co is really important. The, and and the coming to the co is the two and the mune is the I think of it as I don't know if it's in Latin or whatever, but that. you know, the co is the there's two mm -hmm. and the mune is the two of the coming together. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's two coming together. Well, you're not just coming together in a physical space or a relational space, but you're coming together Really, the the essence of it is you're coming together on an on a, on a mutual mu same thing mu yeah, yeah. right a mutual understanding of, of things something. which is a shared mental model, and so you know that's the first part. Communication isn't talking and listening, and listening, by the way, isn't hearing. Listening is like you know really listening with your whole person. Yeah, we you we've said before to the kids and things that listening happens in your head, your heart and in your ears. Your whole it's, body. It's You're paying attention you to body it. language and and listening right. isn't just listening to what that words that are coming out of their mouth, it's listening to the words, their actions. Mm -hmm their body language that, you know, you're, you're really trying to pick up on, on everything. And as a, you know, as a neurodiverse person, you notice a lot of things cause you don't have a filter, right? You so <laughs> you pick up on, you're not filtering a lot of that. So mm -hmm. a lot of folks are saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm saying X, Y, Z. And you're like, yeah, that's what you're saying. But what you're doing is this and that and the other thing. And so I'm, I'm listening to all of that. Right. right? You're taking all in, yeah. you're taking everything in at once. That's part of the difference between... A lot of neurodiverse people are taking in more information. Yeah. It, 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 the reason they're taking it in is because they don't have a, you know, ex their executive function isn't filtering as much as neurotypical right. people, right? So you're, they're just not a, as good of a filter. Right. Or you could say they're, they're, they're experiencing more, right? You, yes. you could say it either way. Well, another way to think about it is as a neurotypical person, I have a lot of control over what I hear, what I focus on, yes. what I look at. Yes. I'm not easily distracted. I can zero in to what I care about. Right. I have control over that. Whereas the ND person doesn't necessarily have as much control over what is getting their attention, what's right. taking their attention, what, what they're filtering, what they're not filtering, all that kind of stuff. So that would make for some tricky conversations. They, so remember in Sesame Street, there yes. it was one of my favorite yes, things at Sesame, Sesame Street. Is that around still? Yes. Yeah. It is one of the longest running. I mean, that was like a history. show when we were kids. It's the best. It was the best. It's still the best. Yeah. So, but anyway, Sesame Street had this thing. I always thought it was cool because it said like you're, 
Uh, this broadcast has been brought to you by the number, you know, the letter A or something yeah. like that. And then they talk about A and, you know, and you learn, right? So well, it was almost like an advertisement, except it was like, you know, I knowledge or something. Alpha. My yeah. favorite was J. And then they had a little song, J, Jill, jumping in her jeans, eating jelly bean. It was the best. So I always nice. loved it when it was J because I loved the little song and the puppet that did it. Nice. This is a true story from That's my childhood. Even though J is not my favorite letter. Not that you should have a favorite letter. No. Anyway, no, back letters. to yours. Yeah. Being, me being neurotypical just completely distracted us. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So uh, I, I, what I talk about a lot is, is the idea that we need to have relationships, like human relationships mm -hmm. in this case, that are brought to you by the number two, that are sponsored by the number two, verse, and, and then there are relationships that are brought to you by the number three, mm -hmm. and we want to have our relationships brought to you by the number three, not by the number two. And so what does that mean, right? We, right. What it's is confusing because it? there's two people. There's two people. Yeah. So why wouldn't you want it? You know, am, am I suggesting that you have a, like a threesome or something? No, that, that's not like the idea. <laughs> I don't think that. <laughs> is that. A third person. A third person or whatever it is. Three is so, a little different. That's different. Uh, sorry. And so <laughs> if you have a relationship brought to you by the number two, which a lot of people do. Yes. A lot of people do. And it's the crux of, of relationships that are that are somewhat dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And that is that if it, it, imagine if you only have let's go to the blocks. If you only have two people, mm -hmm. right? And something happens in the relationship. Let's say some some let's call it a negative thing or a bad thing, something we're not happy about mm -hmm. happens in the relationship. Then the blame for that thing, whatever that thing is, it could be that you're upset about, you know, you bought uh, a freezer. You didn't close the door. You bought a freezer, right? <laughs> you're still mad about the freezer. I'm not mad. <laughs> right? So <laughs> the blame for that can go how many places? Two. Yeah. One or the other. One or the other. Mm -hmm. And if you're this person, then you're you're kind of incentivized or biased to have it go here. Yes. And if you're this person, you're kind of incentivized or biased to have to go there. Right. In a relationship sponsored by the number two, you really don't have a lot of choices of where you're going to put the blame of things. Right. Right. Which pits you against each other. Which pits you against each other a lot. Automatically. Like naturally. Right? The, dyna the structure of the mental model that surrounds this relationship is flawed. Yes. Now, a relationship that's sponsored by the number three has you... Mm -hmm. And me, yeah, and us, or the in between, yeah. the, the relationship itself is a third party nice. that's separate from me and you. And there's an easy way to think of that, right? If you think about, um, you know, if I put sodium chloride or salt, right, mm -hmm. and water, yes, right. If I put salt and water together, no big deal. They, they go together quite well, right? But if I put like, um, I don't know, uh, sodium chloride and... Uh, You're a chemist now. Some other thing. What about oil and water? Yeah, you could do oil or water. But if you put sodium chloride with hydrochloric acid, you're going to get chlorine. You're going to get kind of something volatile, chlorine gas, yeah. right? I feel like I'm with Walter White. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, so, so think about that for a second. Yeah. If you have water and salt, they're both yeah. fine. But then all of a sudden you have salt and something else, boom, explosion, you know, bad stuff. Um. So, so by definition, what that tells you is that the dynamic is a thing. I see. Right? Because if, if salt can exist with can coexist perfectly fine with water without creating something, you know, mm -hmm. volatile. Yes. Then it's not the salt and it's not the water. But now if I just exchange that out, well, people are kind of the same way. Like you could put Bob with Sally and they're doing great. But then you put Bob with, you know, Ginger and Bob and Ginger are both going nuts on each other. And then you put Ginger with Frank and Ginger and Frank are fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Your names are funny. I don't know. I'm just making them up. There's always a Bob. So the point is, the dynamic is its own box. 
and I actually used to do a lot of work with a lot over the years. I've done a lot of work with people mm -hmm. that are having difficult marriages and difficult time and stuff like that. And one of the things that I've done with them that works every time is you, you, because they'll come in and they'll just be fighting each other. I mean, battle. just it's a battle. Full it's a battle. battle. War of roses kind of thing. And you go, listen, you guys got some big issues that you got to work out. So let's choose something big, like go down to your local appliance store and see if they have an extra refrigerator box. You mean like right, a card, the big cardboard the big box cardboard that they box. deliver your fridge? Yeah, exactly. So it is literally the size of a refrigerator. The size of a refrigerator, because yeah. that's how big the 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 relationship. That's and big. and we need to make this thing have a presence, right? Mm -hmm. But you could choose another box; it doesn't matter. But I would always say a refrigerator box. Mm -hmm. And I want you to put it for one week in your living room. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're not going to be sharing a living room if, if you don't do right. this, right? Right. <laughs> so, and you do that so that it's a visual. So that there's a physical yeah. because you're you're there and and he's there, but but the relationship is like it's like in the ether. Yeah. So we need to we need to bring the relationship to a physical, tangible thing that you that you're going to bump into, right? Yeah. And then you can write your relationship on it. You can put things on it, stickers, whatever, to represent it. And then when you have an issue, take something and put it in the box. Interesting. Right? Mm -hmm. So say, you know, I have an issue with our relationship. And here's my issue. And you, the issue goes in the relationship box. Not the person. That's automatically you're on different footing than if you go, I have an issue with you. Yeah, that doesn't go well. That doesn't go well. And they're going to be like, well, I got an issue. I got seven issues yeah. with you. you know, here's, here's all the issues I got with you. Let's talk about that, right? Yeah. No, I've got an issue with the dynamic of our relationship. And I would like to help. I would like the two of us to resolve that issue, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And that's a relationship brought to you by the number three, right? Rather than a relationship where you remove this third thing. And all you have left is two. So issue, it, an issue yeah. has to go somewhere. Right. And it's going to be that I have an issue with you and you have an issue with me. And then we're just like, you, you know, battling. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that this is a very simple starting point of how to have more functional conversations and more functional kind of dynamics. Yeah. And I think it, I would like to pause for a minute because I think the insights from this are several Mm -hmm. One is what you've done is you've taken something that's otherwise invisible but very powerful in mm -hmm. a relationship and you, you made it visible. Physical. W physical Tangible. and visible. Yep. Which means then you, you can't <clears throat> slip back into your habit no. of you versus me because that thing is there. Yeah. And so then you're thinking differently. You're forced to think. I don't mean forced, but you're reminded to think differently yes. about, well, there's this whole big thing. That's influencing both of us, and we can build and work on this. That's right, and, right? and like, like I'm not fixing you, and you're not fixing absolutely. me. We're fixing us. Yeah, which is which is a totally different. And us is the problem. You're not the problem. I'm not the problem. It's the, the dynamic is what's you know going astray or going right. afield, and and to the extent you know you could get a shoebox, you could get a, a you know you could get a tiny you could get one of these blocks right, and you can put it on the kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, you know, you might, that's easy to ignore. Right. If, if you really are having a big issue, get a big box yeah. and have it in your living room. It'll save your marriage. It'll save your, your, uh, you know, relationship, whatever it is, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever your communication. Yeah. Interesting. So that you have to sort of recognize it, make it tangible, make it visual and make it a thing. Mm -hmm. in your relationship and change your mental model from a relationship of two to a relationship of three. Sponsored by the number three, not right. a relationship of three individuals, but a, a relationship that's that's the corporate sponsor of this relationship is the number three. Right. And so there's always that third entity in the middle. In Sesame Street. Terms. Terms, yeah. I mean, they always say that also about kids. Like every time you add another kid, you're not just adding another kid. You're adding a whole nother, I, dynamic, a whole nother dynamic yeah, absolutely. into the relationships because there's always For a sure. dynamic between the twos. Yep. Right. Interesting. Very interesting. <clears throat> so you do the relationship to the number three, yep. which means you see that it's a dynamic. Yes. And you see that it's a shared responsibility to work on this middle block. Yes. 
then how how do you move that forward? Is it then once you've learned that? Yeah, once of- once you've sort of set the baseline of something like that, which is kind of like here's the ground rules of how we're gonna how we're gonna think about our relationship. Mm-hmm. Then then I think the next step is understanding that both of these people have mental models. Yes. And remember earlier I was talking about the communication, the actual relationship mm-hmm. is to commune around a sharing of a mental model that includes aspects of both mental models, which right. means that, you know, a lot of what we do in in these dynamics that are kind of dysfunctional or caustic or whatever, mm-hmm. or even mildly like displeasant yeah. is you say something and then I'm going to lawyeristically argue with it. And then I say something and you're going to lawyeristically. And it's this ping pong lawyer match, right? It's like a court of law. And well, well, you're wrong because blah, blah, blah. It gets nowhere. It gets nowhere. Mm -mm. But if you sort of take a different idea, which is that this person has a mental model. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, we could say it's made up of these parts and these distinctions and these relationships from this perspective, right? Yeah. And and this person has a different mental model, which is made up of these parts and these relationships from this perspective, a slightly right. different perspective. Mm-hmm. And, you know, making different distinctions. And, and what we want to do is kind of like see where and we're like oh you know we're kind of the same on these three things so we you know those three things are the same but this person's adding this one and you're coming at it from two different perspectives okay let's make a shared mental model that includes all the things that were in this one and all the things and and let's try to commune Mm -hmm. literally communicate around that shared mental model of these you know you're coming from this perspective i'm coming from this perspective we see some things similarly But we see we have some things that the other person doesn't recognize as being important and some things that they do and blah, blah, blah. But we have now something approximating a shared mental model. And that's what DSRP helps with is kind of getting into the the nitty gritty of those mental models. Right. But what you also did is you took six things and you made it three. Yeah, because these three were shared by both sides. Well, that's what I'm saying is in a a, a nice way, you get to resolving the differences by isolating them and starting from where you have similarities or where you have agreement. Yes. So it's not... It's not head to head. We we disagree on everything. No. If you if you're more nuanced and you think about how you're really thinking about something, you can say, "Oh, we actually have agreement, and we can build from there yes. and isolate the one or two things that are the crux of a disagreement." Yes. And then nobody's right and nobody's wrong. It's just that you're different in how you're, you're thinking, different. and you're partially different because maybe you're looking at it. From different perspectives, right, right, and 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 so f- th- then that gives me the opportunity to say, well, if I was looking, if I was highlighting, or if I, if if this perspective was the most important perspective to me, mm-hmm. I would probably see it just like you do, but I kind of highlight a, another perspective as being more relevant or more important to me. Right. So I can see now why I see it differently than you do and why you see it differently. But if I was standing in your shoes, I'd see it the way you're seeing it. And then we can see like, oh, actually, I disagree with you on the perspective you're taking, but I don't disagree with you of what you see when you take that perspective. Right. For example. Right. You, um, you know, or you might just fundamentally disagree there might be nothing you know this person might take this perspective and have these four things and this person's taking this perspective and and sees these three things and there's just nothing similar about them and that's okay too well that's okay too because if you understand if you validate oh well you see this from your perspective i see this from mine that also diffuses the conflict, right? And you can have a shared mental model, which is, okay, let's look at seven things from two perspectives. And that's the mental That's model. the shared mental model. So perspective is clearly a big part of it. It is, but it's not, you know, per, the thing about perspectives in, in, in understanding DSRP and its nuances is um, when we change perspective, we change the distinctions that we're making. We change the, the distinctions that we're highlighting and the distinctions that we're low lighting. When we change perspective, we change which relationships we see. Mm-hmm. When we change perspective, we change which parts we decide to highlight and which parts we decide to low light right. of the situation. So 
a shift in perspective is really a shift in all the Everything. distinctions, the systems, the relationships. That's what a shift in perspective is. Mm -hmm. It's not just I'm looking at it from a different vantage point. It's I'm seeing different stuff. Right. I'm making different distinctions that you're not making. I'm looking at these parts, not those parts. I'm seeing these relationships, not those relationships. Yes, yeah, so and you did something important there where you pushed those these seven together. Yeah. Because there are a lot of times when I think people say, oh, well, that's just how you see it, and that's just how I see it, and we're just going to agree to disagree. Yeah. But there are a lot of times in life when you can't agree Absolutely. to disagree. You yeah. actually have to come to a decision together about something that matters. Yeah, you got to raise your kids yeah. together. You got to. So then you, know, you said. Yeah, absolutely. Then you have to figure out: Can we make a decision and move forward on this mental model that has all seven things? Seven things and two perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or do we need to do the work to talk it through and reduce it to something that's exactly. more common or yeah. uh, valuable to us? Or I don't. Yeah, know because this could it. this could get you know, quite a bit more complex, there could be something what we call a zero sum problem, right? right? Which is this thing and this thing are just like fundamentally incompatible with each mm -hmm. other, right? And so, you know, something you believe or think is important and something I believe and think is important is incompatible, right? right? They can't go together. Sometimes that's the case. It's not always the case. It's all, it's much less the case than we think it is right? because we're so uh, bivalent in our thinking. We yeah. often think that's the case when it's not. Right. But that's true. um but there are cases where where you have these two things that just sort of fundamentally conflict, right? And then you're going to have to do the work to sort of say, "Okay, well maybe this time we're going to go with you." Yeah. And next time we'll go with me and you know, we're you know, or you whatever. do the hard this, work to find a middle Or you ground. do the hard work to find Where a middle Where it's like yeah. everybody's a little uncomfortable and everybody's a little comfortable. So we, we each sacrifice a little bit to get to something that we can both live with. That's compromise. Right? Compromise, That's yeah. a compromise Which where is, like we both equally uncomfortable and comfortable at the same time. Which is kind know. of like a lose-lose in a way. <laughs> That's the best so, perspective. <laughs> exactly. It could be a win-win because -win there's a little right. bit of comfort in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so... So the first thing is get your relationship sponsored by the number three. Make that th third party really tangible and, and visible. The next thing is really understand that that communication in a relationship is about communing mm -hmm. around what? Around mental models, right? right. I mean, the, 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 the issue that you're having, like if you have a kid's, Let's say, because kids, you know, kids, finances, those are the things that cause, politics. you know, politics, yeah. kids, finances, you yeah. know, those tend to be things that cause conflict because yes. you have different views on yes. things that are important to you. Yeah. If you have a conflict where you're like, I think we should take little Jimmy and do this with them, and mm -hmm. you think we should take little Jimmy and do that with them, the kids are always Jimmy, right? I know. Uh, and that's what's causing the conflict. Realize that. The conflict is a difference in mental models. Your yes. mental model of what to do with Jimmy in order to accomplish goal X yeah. is different than my mental model of what to do with Jimmy in order to accomplish goal X. Yes. And so what we're navigating is the differences in our mental models. Yes. And just pause there. Put your hands back yeah. up. So the thing that's great about that is then the conversation is about our mental models and that's not right. each other, the, which is what you were saying here. Yeah. Then that helps you move out of the blame game. Yeah. Because it's not you or me. It's, oh, I, your mental model and my. So you put your mental model out on the table, figuratively, or literally, I guess. And then the conversation is about how you're thinking about it, not who you are and the kind of person. Absolutely. And we've actually seen this in, in, in our research. I'm glad you brought that up because we, we've actually seen this in highly conflictual, like yeah. you know, highly conflictual situations. And that's why we created these blocks is when we say, hey, look, you know, you come to this meeting that we, we know that there's some conflict between you. Why don't you put your issues on the table? Right. You know, right. So this dry erase on the block what your issues are. My issue is, you know, he makes noise when he chews or whatever, you know, <laughs> or whatever it is. And, yeah. you know, so I have these issues in front of me and you have your issues yeah, in front of you. Here. 
And what we've seen over and over and over again is when people actually have physical things representing their issues on the table, they're much more prone to listen. Mm -hmm. And beca because if I know that this is on the table, nobody can kind of like sleight of hand take that off the table without everybody noticing, yes. right? Whereas if I am holding on to them in my head, I've got to be the, the, the person who's in charge of making sure that they get represented. But when they're on the table, they're literally on the table. Well, also sometimes I'm I sit there. I'm like, don't forget, yeah. don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget. So you're not this listening. This is what you want to say, and I can't hear you because exactly. I'm just, I gotta wait so I can say this. Yep. So then I I have it, and I can actually remember more because it's got a right. thing associated with. And it. And if we have these four things literally on the table, then for all intents and purposes, there's our agenda, right? Yep. This is our agenda. We're gonna talk about these four things. And you can't ignore one you because can't there's four. Because it's a block. You can't on do the table. three yeah, exactly. because there's four. Exactly. You can't gloss over mine and right. I can't gloss over yours. The second thing that we've noticed happening when people kind of make their mental models more tangible, more physical, more visual is like with things like blocks or the cards that we have, the, yeah. the, the um, whiteboard cards. Whiteboard cards. These are all dry erasable. Is because these blocks are literally separate from me, physically mm -hmm. separate from me, I'm I take things less personally. Yes. Right? Just because when that. you're talking about this issue, you're not talking directly about me. Like this thing is not the same as me. Right. Right? Whereas when the issues are being held by me and I'm the master of those issues and I'm responsible mm -hmm. and accountable for getting those issues out. And it feels personal. It feels pretty personal when you're talking about those issues and I'm holding them tightly. But when they're out on the table, it's kind of like, oh, sh she's talking about this. She's not talking about me. She's talking about this. Right. But it also allows me to speak to this. Yes. Not you. Yes. And it allows you to hear this, yes. not you. That's right. And and so it goes both ways. So whether or not we use these physical, tangible, visual things, or whether or not we just kind of learn how to be that way and do it better in our yeah. everyday communication, where we see these things as different, distinctly different from the person, we speak to the issue rather than the person, those kinds of things, uh, that's going to dramatically improve communication around shared mental models. And if you have a shared mental model, you can move you can move forward, right? And, and we always talk about the, the guys in the canoe, right? If one yeah. guy's paddling one way and the other guy's paddling the other way, the canoe is just, you're oh, both right. working really hard, but the canoe's staying still or it's going in a circle or, you know, some crazy yeah. chaos. Yeah. But if you both are paddling same. In the same direction, because you have the same shared mental model of, hey, we're going over there, then yep. things are going to go, you know, swimmingly. No pun intended. <laughs> that was well done. <laughs> I mean, I think the great thing about it is I don't I, I am always reminding myself that people are not always aware that they're building mental models in the first place. And that's why we tend to be blame based. Like, that's why we tend to blame each other for things yes. rather than think about how other people are thinking differently about the things. And this technique that um, R by three mm -hmm. is, a, is a way to actually train yourself, remind yourself that that's how it is. And then you take it the step further and say, oh, well, it's not you versus me. It's how you're thinking about it versus how I'm thinking about it. And how do we reconcile that That's right. to be uh, something like you said, a shared mental model that we can move forward on? Yeah. It works. It works. I've seen it work. We've seen it work for 30 years. That's with old. A lot of a lot of different couples, a lot of different people, a lot of different conflicts. Yeah. You know, real conflicts, not just not just relational conflicts, yeah. but you know, real uh, real conflicts between. That's you know, right. Do you remember when offender and victim and all kinds of things? Oh my God! I just remembered several years ago, probably 15 or 20 years ago, principal called us from an elementary school. Oh, yeah. And she said, I have to tell you this story. Yeah. I love those calls. And she says, there were these two kids on the playground, on the playground. Bobby That's and right. Sally, always Bobby and Sally, <laughs> who got into a conflict on the play playground about a ball. Yep. Like somebody took the ball and the other one wanted the ball. It was, it was a big deal. And then it blew up. And because the teachers had been using these blocks in the classroom to teach subjects like yeah. English and things, I think it was Sally. K 
came running into the principal's office and said, we need these on we the playground the right now. Yes, yes. That's and right. you and I were just like, that's it. Yeah, that's everything. That's everything. That was everything. Well, that reminds me of the, the uh, this is one of my favorite stories. Uh, we, you know, we trained a lot of uh, yes. educators and inevitably people in the trainings are, you know, they're learning it professionally in, in education and yeah. business and whatever. But then they realize, oh, this is a, also very relevant to my personal life, which yes. is, you know, for most of us, more even more important than our mm -hmm. business life. And, um, you know, so this one particular uh, educator, she asked, can can I bring my husband to the training? I remember. <laughs> and her husband was willing to, uh, you know, come to a two day long training yes. for educators. Right. Yeah. And her yeah. husband worked in, in you know, in, in Pennsylvania in a factory. Yes. He was a you know manager or leader of yeah. a factory. You know, with guys that made machines and, you know, a hard mechanical factory. Yeah. He went through this training. I remember. And a couple a couple weeks later, I saw him and he goes, you wouldn't believe it. I had two guys going at each other on the on the factory floor, just yelling at each other. And I came over and I said, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, and they they're like he's this and he's that, and they're doing this. He thing, said they right? were about to go to blows. They were about to go to blows. Big yeah, fight. yeah. And and they were doing exactly this, right? Mm -hmm. It was it was uh, there's an issue, and it's you, and no, it's it's, it's you, no, it's you, no, yeah. it's you, and here's why it's you, and the legalistic, argumentative lawyer kind of, and he and he put his hands on both their shoulders, <laughs> and he said, guys, and he. And he said, I channeled the training at that moment. He said, guys, these are big barrel chested, you know, yeah. Pennsylvania factory workers. He goes, it's all about perspective. <laughs> your perspective is this and your perspective is this. Mm -hmm. And he said, as soon as I said that, it was like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, and then they're kind of like, no, oh, okay, you know, yeah. and it and it worked. Yeah. So the same. I mean, <laughs> and I and I say this all the time, but I can't. I I just ha I say it, I'm going to keep saying it because yeah. if you talk to people, I I really love talking to people who are really amazing at what they do. It doesn't matter what they do. Like mm -hmm. if you're a, if you're truly one of the great skateboarders, like Tony Hawk, or you know, if you're one of the great quilters. Or you're one of the great historians, or you're one of the great auto mechanics, or taxi drivers, or president. You know, like doesn't matter what basketball player, whatever. If you're great at something, you have a lot in common with other people that are great at something. Yes. And when you talk to people that are truly great at something, what you realize is they really focus on being really good and practicing the fundamentals. Right. They're not doing like. Yeah. Wildly complicated things. They're just doing the the basics, the fundamentals really, 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 really well. Yes. And the reason they're doing so well is because they're practicing the fundamentals. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So we can get real complicated about all this stuff, but it really is about the fundamentals. You got a mental model. I got a mental model. We got to find a way to make those mental models work together. Yeah. There's you, there's me, there's our relationship. Yeah. Pretty basic. Yeah. Is it easy to understand? Yeah. Is it hard to do? Yeah. Because when you're in that, it's easy. In that emotional yeah. state where you're about to get in a fight, it's hard to be like, hold on a second. Let's go, let's go over and have this yeah. conversation next to the box. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard, hard to break to, old patterns. It is. It's of, hard. Of interaction, of behavior, of mental models, yeah. of all of it. But it is hard. But I would also say it doesn't take a lot. No. It's just a little moment of bringing that subconscious pattern to the conscious and choosing to break it. That's right. Just by seeing it just a little bit differently. Just a little bit differently. Just a little bit It's different. a very small change. Just a tiny bit of, of awareness at yeah. that moment. To be like, hey, let's go over and have this by the box. Yeah. Have the box in the first place, and now let's have the conversation by the box. It changed the conversation. It changed the whole conversation. It changed the outcome. Yep. It changed the marriage, changed the, yeah. the relationship. Yeah. Simple fundamentals 
but impactful. You know, the, the SEALs always talk about slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? That what they're talking about is- You mean is, Navy SEALs. Yeah, the, sorry, the, not, na SEALs. not the- <laughs> um, Navy SEALs and, and special forces and lots yeah. of people talk about slow is smooth, smooth is fast. It, what they're talking about is, you know, slow it down, practice, get it right. And then once you've gotten it right, you'll be it. smooth. And once you get it smooth, then then you know, then you've got the routine, then you can do it fast. Yeah. And thinking is the same way. When you slow it down and you really understand how to make distinctions, how to see the relationships, how to break things down into parts, put them into holes, how to take perspectives of point and view. When you understand those fundamentals and you practice them yeah. a little bit, just a little bit, you will start to be like, oh, okay, now I can do this. I can do this twice as fast. Oh, I can do this twice as fast again. Oh, pretty soon you'd be really? just so fast mm -hmm. at doing it that, that you can do it in the moment, yeah. in an in argument, in a conversation. Yeah. That's the way it's done is, you, you know, to learn dribbling, you start slow. And then you go, boom, 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 yeah. right? And then pretty soon you're doing it this way and uh, behind your back and through your legs and up. Fancy stuff. Fancy stuff. Harlem Globetrotters. You're doing but it. there's nothing really fancy. It's all fundamentals. It looks amazing. It is. Yeah. yeah. And, a, and a great relationship is the core of your life. I mean, Absolutely. like it's going to drive all of your success. If you're coming from a place every day that is stressful and conflictual and, conflictual and ungrounded, then the rest of your life is gonna just be chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're coming from a place that's grounded and and solid and happy and, and good and energizing, then then all the other things in your life are gonna go well. So yeah. that, working on that is one of the most important things that you can work on and taking the time to slow it down, get it smooth so that you can do it fast fast because you know life happens fast you got kids you got things you got soccer practice you got yeah. all these things you got a million things and you got to be able to operate fast but you got to be able to do those important fundamentals yeah. in the moment yes. right you can't yeah. leave them because they will build up and they will blow up yeah that's right you don't want that you don't want that you don't want the blow up Happy but the blow ups day. from the build up blow, a blow up is just nature is just reality telling you that you allowed buildup. That you didn't actually process right. it at the right time. There's a great saying, this, it's called suddenly syndrome. Yes. Nothing happens suddenly. You don't suddenly get a divorce. You don't suddenly you know, get overweight. You don't suddenly, nothing happens suddenly. It happens by little incremental buildup. Over time. Right? And same in reverse. You don't suddenly get in great shape. You don't suddenly, you know, have a great marriage. You don't yeah. suddenly, it's the micro makes the macro. And it's this incremental growth, compounding growth. Yes. Better every day. Over time. Over time. And then we have a sudden moment and we go, oh, instant this or instant yeah. that. But no. those moments will happen faster if you practice. Absolutely. Right. So you're saying you can actually make those moments happen faster. If you practice the fundamentals. That's what I mean. The fundamentals. If the problem is we're yeah. practicing a lot of superficial stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of practicing the fundamentals, the really right. basic stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And and over and over again, I'm I'm taught this by the by people that I, I just you know I love looking around at what what's this guy doing like in lacrosse. Yeah. What makes that person? And you and the, you you listen to them and they go, oh, I just practice all day with my right, practice all day with my left. Yeah. You're like, it wasn't that complicated. They're just like, they can do the everything with their left hand that they can do with their right hand. You know? Yeah, that's right. It's like something so simple, like left and right. Yeah. I can do, I didn't just focus on what I was, my strength. I practiced my left and yeah. my right. Yeah. So I can shoot from both sides. I can catch from both sides. I, I can do everything from both sides. That's right. It's fundamental uh, skills. The fundamentals. Well, there's a lot of nuggets in there. There's relationships brought to you by the number three. Yes. There's focusing on the mental models that people are building. Yes. There's the the great slow is smooth, smooth is fast, yep. which is just take your time to learn the basics, learn the fundamentals, and then it all becomes almost second nature. And the co communication oh, of yeah, mental models. And, and, and eventually, once you've got that, then kind of going a little deeper into the DSRP of those mental models and right. being able to kind of commune around, um, around common mental models. 
you know, and that the great thing about this is that if you can master that, this little barbell relationship between two people is the is the crux of all everything more complex, right? So if you talk about organizational culture, well, it's just the combination of different relationships and shared mental models, right? So you, you think of this as a little barbell, this this relationship between two people as a barbell, because it looks yeah. kind of like a barbell, yeah. right? Well, a very, very complex network is just the, the it's just more barbells. It's a bunch of those. It's barbells. a bunch of barbells, yeah. right? Yeah. And so if you understand this basic relationship, you can understand more complex group relationships. Yeah. If you understand this basic relationship, you can actually understand this is called interpersonal. This same basic fundamental understanding can be used for intrapersonal, right. which is understanding self. Yes. Because understanding self is, in a way, you understanding you. And yes. so there's there's the you that's understanding and there's the you that is. And you're kind of interacting those two and yep. trying to find communication between them. And so, it's again, it's a barbell, but it's happening. The whole thing's happening internally. Right. So right. I, I'm, the only reason I'm saying that isn't to bring up a bunch more stuff, but just to say, if you practice these fundamentals they'll be wildly applicable to yes. smaller and larger systems. Right. Transferable. Transferable. Guess what that means? It's a wrap. So that's a wrap. That's a we wrap. have to remind people to like and subscribe. You have to say please. Please and thank please you. Please and thank you. Yeah. Because it really helps us and yeah. it makes it so that we can do more of these. And we're really enjoying them and we're loving that you guys are giving us such amazing feedback and how much you love what we're doing and we want to do more of it so uh the more you can like subscribe comment share with your friends the better the better able will be to do more of these and um, get into topics that you're interested in and things like that so thank you very much yes. we I, I can't say how much we appreciate your support mm -hmm.